During the last couple of videos, I've suggested rounding pessimistically. However, it occurred to me that folks may not understand what I mean. In this video, I'll not only define the term, but I'll also provide a couple of examples. Plus, at the end, I'll provide a bonus example of why this is so critical. Let's jump into the material. <laughs> You've likely heard and probably used rounding up or down when estimating things. The point of rounding a number is to keep it close to the original value while making it easier to use. Remember though, when you round, you're sacrificing accuracy for convenience. <laughs> Great, you're saying. I know about rounding, but you still haven't told us what you mean by rounding pessimistically. Okay. The Oxford Online Dictionary defines pessimism as a tendency to see the worst aspect of things or believe that the worst will happen. And while we don't want to be too pessimistic, assuming things aren't going to go as planned will, will help you make safer decisions and, hopefully, lessen the chance that you have a really bad day. With that in mind, we should always be rounding towards the scenario that produces the least desirable outcome. Still confused? Okay, let's look at an example. Imagine you're trying to determine how long it will take you to fly from Rochester International Airport, KRST, to St. Louis Lambert International Airport, KSTL. The map shows a distance of 324 nautical miles. And if your aircraft is capable of 124 knots ground speed, that means your trip should take 324 miles divided by 124 knots or 2.61290323 hours. <laughs> While this number is very accurate, it's not very friendly, so let's round it to something easier to use. Since hobs and tack times are usually reported in tenths of an hour, let's round to the nearest tenth of an hour. In this case, we can either round the time down to 2.6 or up to 2.7. Which should we choose? Let's start by identifying which of these is the least desirable. Is it worse to arrive earlier than expected or later? Because more time en route means more fuel used, and in my case, because I'd more likely need to use the bathroom, the pessimistic assumption is arriving later than expected. Therefore, for this example, rounding pessimistically would have us round up to 2.7 hours. Now let's estimate how long we'll be able to fly without stopping for fuel. Using the same example, let's say the weight and balance limits only allow us to have 29 gallons of fuel in the tanks. According to the POH, estimated fuel burn for our aircraft at 75% power is 11 gallons per hour. Dividing available fuel by the burn rate, or 29 divided by 11, gives us 2.63636364 hours worth of fuel. Again, this number is not very friendly. We know the airplane will run out of fuel somewhere between 2.6 and 2.7 hours. And to me, the least desirable outcome would be that we run out of fuel sooner. So unlike last time where we rounded up, rounding pessimistically for this case would be to round down to 2.6 hours. Now for the bonus example. Let's put these two examples together to demonstrate why being pessimistic with these calculations is so important. If we estimate it takes 2.7 hours to fly from KRST to KSTL and we'll run out of fuel 2.6 hours after starting the engine, will we be able to make the trip without stopping somewhere for fuel? Well, ignoring the fact that regulations for daytime visual flight rules require us to have enough fuel to fly to our destination plus an additional 30 minutes at cruise power, these numbers make it seem obvious that the answer is no. To avoid having to make an emergency engine out landing, we should stop somewhere along the way for fuel. Could we make the trip safely if we didn't round pessimistically? Well, maybe. Remember, the exact time for travel was 2.61290323 hours, and we have 2.63636364 hours of fuel. So if everything goes perfectly, there may be just enough fuel to get there. But considering the risks of being wrong, would you be willing to bet your life that things are going to work out exactly as planned? <laughs> I'm not. There are many places where rounding can help make calculations faster or easier. Determining airspeed, takeoff and landing performance, fuel burn, time and route, and, and many more. However, we must always be aware that you're trading accuracy for convenience. And if you're not careful, you could put yourself in a bad situation. As seen in the above examples, rounding pessimistically can make close call situations much more obvious. To summarize, rounding pessimistically means rounding towards the least desirable outcome. Remembering this rule will not only help on your next check ride, it could very well save your life and the lives of your passengers. If you found this video helpful, please press the thumbs up button, tell your friends about it, and be on the lookout for the next video. See you next time.